Welcome back. Today we are talking about going plant-based with young children in the home. I've got my mom baseball cap on. I've been hanging around with my little ones. I have four kids of my own, um, ages 11 through four, and we went plant-based about three and a half years ago. So do the math. I, I had four little kids when I decided that I was gonna transition to a plant-based way of feeding my family. So if that's you, if you are wanting to do this or you've been wanting to do this for a while and you've struggled getting over that obstacle of how do I navigate this with my kids, uh, especially small, young children, this video is for you. So if this is your first time seeing these videos, um, I wanna let you know a little bit about me and why I do these videos. My name's Danielle Dinkelman, and I'm a, ma a national board certified health and wellness coach, and I'm a plant-based nutrition educator. I do these videos on my YouTube channel, and we post them inside of my free private Facebook group, both under the name Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman. So if you haven't subscribed on YouTube or joined us in the Facebook group, I would really invite you to do that. We do these videos every single week, and we talk about things that are gonna help you make your journey easier, help you have more confidence in how you are taking steps forward for yourself and for your family's health. So let's dive right in. This video is really gonna be sharing my insights from my own experience, um, colored by my understanding of behavior change and habit change um, as a wellness coach. So let's talk a little bit about kids. The tricky thing with little ones is um, kids are not, they don't love change. They don't love changes of routine. They're very habit oriented like any human is, but I think children especially. So the first thing to keep in mind is that you are going to be their guide and you get to be their coach as we change these habits. And there's a few ways that you can influence that. And I do invite you to look at this as a way to be an influence and to take away any thoughts of force, um, but also don't be so permissive about it and um, too laid back such that you're the only one in your family trying to change the way you're eating. Um, I do really recommend to all of my clients that have small children, that have families, that they go ahead and make this a lifestyle change for their home. And as uh, the wife, as the mother, we are typically the ones that are preparing and planning the meals. I know that's not always the case, um, but I find that that's most typical. And as such, we also have the most um, power to influence our families for good. And really, I see it as like a stewardship that we have this opportunity to, to influence our families in a really healthful way. So number one, I wanna talk about the environment of our home. And number two, I wanna talk about how we can talk with our kids and teach our kids about healthy eating. And we'll see what else comes up. I'm kind of doing this one on the fly a little bit. But um, yeah, mostly I wanna share with you what worked for me, all right? So let's talk about the environment that you're setting up in your home. There are, there are things that we can do that are easier, decisions that are easier to make when we're at the grocery store than that are easier than, than making those decisions at home. And this is what I mean by that. Um, when, when I fill my home with whole food, plant-based foods, um, then we choose from those foods, right? And I learn to choose my snacks and my meals from those foods. And then my children and my husband, they, we all, that we create a food environment, okay? Now, things can get really difficult if that food environment is kind of muddied with a lot of non-whole food, non-plant-based foods. Because if you've studied plant-based nutrition on any level, you know that the whole idea with whole food plant-based nutrition is that we are 
Um, we're focusing on these natural foods that aren't inflated in sodium. They're not inflated amounts of sugar. They're not inflated amounts of fat, salt, sugar, fat. Those are things that our, our sensory systems are set up um, to crave. So to have a home where those things are available, I have found that makes it hard for me and my kids to practice making really healthful choices and healthful habits with our food because it's hard for carrots to compete with Cheetos. Let's just be honest. We are creatures of pleasure, okay? We are, we are, we are constantly seeking pleasure. And so why not have the most pleasurable food in your home be those oranges that you picked up at the grocery store this week? Or um, that, that really strong, um, flavorful hummus that, that, you, that you made earlier this week? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, so so that's, that's the very first thing. When, when, when I'm counseling and coaching with clients, um, that are wanting to go more plant-based and they're concerned about their kids going along with it, help them make choices by, by designing your food environment, I guess is my first tip. Um, I know, and let me say this disclaimer, I know everybody's situation is different. I know that that doesn't, it, it's not that easy and it's not maybe even possible for every single family and home to do it that way. But I'm, I'm sharing with you that I really believe that, that that's the ideal. And, and that's how we did it and it worked really well. Um, I've shared in other videos and other stories and podcasts that I've shared about our story um, that there's definitely other food that comes in, but we don't let it stay. Um, or if there's food that the husband is bringing in, um, I'm gonna respect his ability to make his own choices um, but we don't allow that to become part of the food environment. So he actually has like a, a, a shelf in the storage room downstairs where he can keep things like that, that we don't necessarily want to consider as like a normal part of our food environment. Does that make sense? Okay. So number one, um, Pam Popper says sanitize your food environment. And I, I do think that that's a, a good way to think of it, I, I like saying, you know, be intentional, design, let's say, it, let's say it that way, design your food environment, okay? So start there. Now, the next big piece to think about here when you're wanting to go plant-based, you're wanting to make these changes, and you've got these little kids, um, how are you gonna talk to them about the changes you're making? How are you gonna explain yourself? Are you gonna explain yourself? Um, are you going to involve them? Uh, in this process? Are there little decisions and choices that they can help you make? Um, every, every family is different, every parenting style is different, um, but I'll just share with you a little bit of what I have seen that worked really well in my home and I've seen it work really well in other people's homes and I've talked to a lot of friends that this has worked for them as well. So again, just kind of speaking from, my, from experience, um, I, I honestly feel like it's really beneficial to look at this as an opportunity for you to take on a role of nutrition educator in your home. So step one, if you don't feel confident enough in your understanding of plant-based nutrition and why exactly you are wanting to make these changes, um, I invite you to keep doing your research, keep doing the homework, keep listening to the podcasts, watching the YouTube videos, um, watching the documentaries, pick up a book. Um, there's so much information out there and I know sometimes it can be overwhelming, but the more you educate yourself about this stuff, the more easily you'll be able to teach it to your family, which like make no mistake, you absolutely will need to teach this to your family because you know as well as I do, this idea of plant, whole food, plant-based nutrition is so upstream to the mainstream, isn't it? It's not being taught in our schools. It's not on the back of the cereal box. It's not in the my plate or the in the in the guidelines, right? We have a responsibility to teach this to our families. And I've got to tell you, 
like I said, so um, my youngest was just not even quite a year old. I think he turned, yeah, he turned a year right around the time that we decided to like dive in and go plant-based. And so I've been teaching these kids since they were little. And you know, again, you know as well as I do that little children can learn pretty complex things when we as the teacher can just boil it down to the most essential things. And maybe that's a video for another day of exactly what I would teach them because um, I could definitely share that with you. So if that's if that's interesting to you, please drop a comment below and let me know and I will make sure that I make a video on that and in a future day. But, but for now, I just, I wanna invite you to take on that role as teacher. And it can be as simple as, you know, saying, you know kids, mom has been learning a lot about about food and about health and I've learned a lot about different types of food can actually um, interact you know can can affect our health in different ways did you know that did you know that our food affects our health and you know you can have these conversations with your kids and so I will say really briefly I don't recommend teaching them like this food is bad and this food is good because let's be honest, this child that you're raising is probably going to consume all types of food in the future. And we don't wanna create um, uh, eating disorders or um, like weird, we don't, we just, we don't wanna mess with the psychology behind food too much. Um, it can get messy. So what I recommend is teaching kind of the green light, yellow light, um, red light system which is you can just talk about it like well there's certain foods that are like everyday foods all the time foods green light okay and then there's foods that are more yellow light it's like oh we should probably tap the brakes and think about this before we eat it it's not an everyday thing um, but once in a while it's probably okay um, and then there's the red light foods. It's like, yeah, sometimes, like maybe for super special occasions or, um, you know, if there's really nothing else available, if we don't have a green or a yellow light option, yeah, maybe maybe we do need to um, go ahead and eat a red light option. All of us have run a red light before, right? Sometimes it's just necessary. Um, so we can teach it kind of in on this spectrum rather than this, um, good versus bad sort of thing. So that's, again, maybe a little bit of my personal opinion on that. Um, take it or leave it. But um, anyway, so I guess I'm just saying the more you talk openly with your kids and take teaching opportunities and help them to see food through the lens that you do now of seeing the difference, teach them the difference between a whole food and a processed food. And you can have fun with this. You can quiz them and see if they can identify, you know, hold up something at the grocery store or, you know, as they're choosing food in at your home, you can ask them like, is that a whole food or is that a processed food? What do you think? Keep it fun, keep it educational. Um, and, and there never really needs to be any sort of shame around our food choices. We are all learning. Um, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, like I said, I could go further into this, but I want to save that maybe for another video another day. So I hope that's helpful to just know that you definitely get to be the teacher. And um, if you need more support and more resources with that, feel free to reach out to me. I would be more than happy to send some things your way. Um, I think the last thing that I wanna share with you is just to trust yourself and to trust your kids in this process. Um, every family is gonna look a little different. My experience is not gonna be typical of yours. Um, there was a time that I hosted group coaching programs just for moms and we talked about how to help them uh, take their individual, their unique family in through this transition process into more plant-based eating. And it was amazing to me to learn and to see how different each family dynamic was. And each family, there were certain foods that were harder to get rid of than others. Um, 
you know, there's just so many factors here. So overall, I just invite you to have some grace for yourself, patience with your children, and, and just be diligent. Make the decision, and I've, I've said this before, lovingly put your foot down. It is okay for you to step up as the leader in your home when it comes to nutrition. Um, in a positive, loving, open sort of way. So I encourage you to find what that would look like for you. So yeah, that's all I have for you today. I hope that's helpful to get a little window into what that looked like for me and what I've seen work for other families. Please feel free to reach out. If you need a quick coaching call on this, um, you can always go to my website, daniellediekelman.com. Um, first coaching session is always free. There's a button at the top of my website. I would love to hear from you. And this is a big passion of mine of just helping families be successful in taking on this lifestyle change because we really are, when we adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle, we are choosing to be that, that one fish that goes upstream to the mainstream. And it's not easy. Um, so I would love to support you, whatever you need. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Leave any comments below on what you've struggled with or what strategies have worked for you. What made your journey easier and what are kind of your top tips that you share with other moms that are trying to make this change for their family. I would love to hear them. In the meantime, um, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or and or come and visit us in the free Facebook group. They are both called Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman. I'd love to see you there and take care.